welcome to Rhythm, a podcast on being in balance through conversations with the Swami. Namaste Rhythm listeners, my name is Sunil. I'm with Swami Tadananda from the Ramakrishna Vedanta Center of Auckland, New Zealand. How are you Swamiji? I'm very good Sunil, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. In the last episode, we gave our listeners an advanced meditation technique. Shall we discuss more about the technique today? What is so special about this technique and why is it different from the technique that uh, we uh, gave our listeners in episode 8, which was quite a very basic one? Yeah, thank you, Sunil. Yes, uh, for the very beginners who did not have uh, much understanding or background to meditation, we gave a simpler version of it. Uh, just like, you know, babies who don't have teeth, we give them simple, easy to digest food. Yeah. But as they develop their capacity, which we hope that our regular meditators have yeah. developed now, then we can give them, you know, some hard food, bread and chapati. <laughs> okay. So here in this episode, last episode, we gave a more detailed version of it. And I think it's a good idea uh, to explore for you to know why. What's new in this and uh, how do we use this and how it's going to be more beneficial. Mm-hmm. So the the beginning, the main the introductory feature steps are the same. How we sit, how we breathe, how we connect with, uh, with, uh, with everyone, mm-hmm. praying for everyone's uh, good and welfare and everything. Mm-hmm. And then we come back to the real meditation process. And that's where that difference comes. So you will notice, or meditators would have noticed that we give a little guidance about the different dimensions of our being. And we say, just like ice, water, water vapor, and something that became water vapor, they are the same substance, but in different states. So in ice, the water molecules are in the fixed state and it's called solid. They can't move around. But when there is greater freedom and they flow around, that state is called liquid Mm -hmm. water. But still it's confined to the vessel in which the water is there. Mm -hmm. And when it's a greater degree of freedom, then the water molecules are able to fly around Mm -hmm. and we call that water vapor. Mm -hmm. But still they are oxygen and hydrogen bound together as a water molecule. Mm -hmm. They might want to be free and be just oxygen and hydrogen separately, O2, H2. That's even higher, greater degree of freedom. But why two molecule atoms should be bound together? Mm. Why can't I just be simply an oxygen atom? Mm. And then it just it can keep on going there. Right. So the different degrees of freedom and energy yes. is there. Correct. It is like your... And so as you go higher and higher, the energy level increases. It's like your 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Yeah. These are all wavelengths, you know. Mm-hmm energy and, and the amount of information that is contained in a 6G or 5G is so much superior to, 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 to 2G. Yes. So when we function through the physical body only, we are like an old 2G phone. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> when we go into the mind, mental level, then maybe we are 3G, 4G phone. Okay. All right. So you'll find that people who have got a manual job, they can do only so much. Mm-hmm. But those who are intellectual people, they are the ones who occupy the upper management. They are the ones who are thinking, planning. CEOs. And yep. CEOs, you yep. know, and they get paid more because they're yep. the ones who make policies, who have got ideas. Yes. If you can give one good idea uh, in your company, yep. okay, you are worth uh, mm. your whole recruitment, you know. Yes. That there's the power of a person who can think. But then there are other people who sit even be- beyond that. Mm-hmm. Okay who run the whole organization at the top, the, the, the top men. So, so this is how the universe is constituted. Mm-hmm. And we as an individual are a microcosm, a part of the macrocosm. The macrocosm is the ocean. I am a wave in that. Okay. So, but the, the pattern is same. Mm. So when I look at myself now subjectively, I've got a physical body. Mm-hmm. That's the equivalent to the ice. Mm-hmm. Then I've got a mental body. The equivalent is water. Mm-hmm. 
and then there is a what a vapor state mm-hmm. and that's where we want to introduce to our listeners today this idea of the spiritual intelligence mm. okay buddhi yeah. is in sanskrit called the power of discrimination the will power so to say mm. that controls the mind okay the fine always controls the grossa yes okay so what we have discussed today the different dimensions or different states. representation states of what we are is a whole continuity but the physical level the mental level the spiritual. intelligence level mm-hmm. and beyond that sits the pure spiritual consciousness mm-hmm. as as a conscious being mm-hmm. that, that i am different from a chair more intelligent than a, a cat or dog uh, is because in a human being that intelligence or consciousness is more manifest yes. in the cat and dog it is also there but its manifestation is less yes and so if we can develop a technique to facilitate the manifestation more mm. that would be marvelous isn't it mm. education training is all about that okay but we, let's understand the framework of things so in that meditation technique we said just like ice melts into water water merges into water vapor likewise we visualize that the physical body with its all imperfections you know its gender its age its disease its color and all those things it's a very limited thing you know you have to transport it from one place to the other by using a car or plane or something but mentally you can go to another place in a second mm. you see there's no boundary for the thoughts but physically you are so bound mm. so when we begin to work with the physical level it has got its own limitations mm. the eyes can see only so much the ears can only hear so much and you got this five senses and these five senses are the gateways through which we take energy from the external world light energy for the eyes sound energy for the ears and we represent them in our mind and that's our representation of the world mm. if we had another sense the world will appear as something different different if we have one less sense like we are deaf or color blind we our and comprehension or uh, our perspective of the world will be different yes. so we are so sense bound limited by the body limited by the senses yeah. and then we are also limited by the mind okay how much uh, how do we formulate ideas how do we rationalize them how do we understand them how we manage them yeah. how do we plan and what we know right because you only yeah. the mind you only know some things yes. not everything so much only, yeah, only you know? so okay much, yeah. what we are exposed to exactly. you know you are born in one particular country and yeah. in a particular family and yeah. environment that's all that has been exposed to that's right another person living in the kalahari desert yes. has got a totally different world you know that <laughs> yes. you can't even imagine yes. but he has got his own world in which he knows how to function survive in all right. these things and before we know a little bit we are called of this stage from this world yes. you see so we are living quite a bit in the darkness with a small torch light <laughs> and we see a few things and that's all our knowledge that's right that's so we should we should be humble that we should be humble. very exactly. little they will never we know, know everything yeah. yeah and we and so we want to know everything then is this way of seeing or understanding or perceiving through the senses is the way is it ever going no, to happen no. you might amplify the power of the senses right. like a telescope to see far away things mm. or phone to hear far away or tv but no matter how much you increase it mm. would you still be have a tool to that can be all knowing all knowing no see so and and in the, the gross level you can't yeah no. and so that's a lesson for scientists mm. okay because that's what they're trying to do <laughs> okay <laughs> yes okay and then the intellectually you know how much you can understand mm. you know understanding is trying to rationally put various ideas together that it makes a logical sense mm. the penny drops is i got it you know but if new idea comes and doesn't fit in that is scratching your head you know i can understand you know even what is understanding what is knowledge we need to understand that a little deeper maybe those are topics we will take up another mm. but in this meditation technique we are trying to do something else we say we know the limitations of the body ice has come out of water let's visualize that the ice merges into the source that it has come from mm-hmm. okay okay to its because the ice is a product water is the cause mm-hmm. but where did the water come from it came from water vapor that condensed yes 
that's invisible with yes. asoda vipa it materialized yeah. uh, drops, drops of rain yeah. you know mist or something like that yes. and then you, you get something in a in a pot or a bowl so let's have a more full or comprehensive integral conception of who we are that there are different layers of our being the gross body the subtle mind and there is the causal causal means that which is the cause like the water vapor which we will call as the intelligence intellect part of it or the spiritual dimension part of it there and then all of it has come from even something higher we feel ourselves as that consciousness but we just are not able to pinpoint and express it because the mind is not able to go comprehend it's just like the water vapor became invisible it's there but you know it's there intellectually yeah. but it's not yes. grasped by any of the senses now okay because the senses can only perceive gross things yes. it's not designed for the subtle perception yes. type of thing yes so when we do that meditation before we do that meditation in this level 2 Uh, advanced one we try to reintegrate ourselves to the ultimate being that we are mm-hmm. which is pure consciousness so we go th- through that process of not imagination but visualization mm-hmm. imagination is a conceptual thing in your head visualization is more of a feeling you know i am you know like a, like a solid piece of ice now i have become merged into water like x-men you know they shape shift us they change from one form to the other so we people have changed into that and then it goes down into the form is changing the state is changing and i and as i go to the higher one i feel more powerful more energy is there more free more free freedom is there freedom you know there. my limitations uh, are not shackling me anymore yes okay a piece of ice is tied to that shape you know but the moment it melts it's able to flow freely and take the shape of the vessel yeah. but when it becomes whatever it is it is able to fly yeah. around everywhere yeah. so we want freedom mm. we want greater freedom we don't want to be bound by things mm. so physical level is the highest level of bondage mm. mind is freer yeah. compared to the eyes the physical body but there's a greater degree of freedom when we abide in what is called the buddhi level or the spiritual intelligence okay but ultimate freedom is at that pure consciousness that's why we call mukti nirvana yes. freedom yes. when when we are in that state then there's no limitation absolutely yes. free beyond time beyond space beyond names beyond forms beyond, so uh, the infinite knowledge is the infinite bliss no ignorance no misery that is the divine birth right of every one of us mm. and before we do this meditation we want to expand mm. our frame of how we conceive mm. or conceptualize ourselves so that's why we are taking that yeah. a new element process, in this yeah. second yeah. Process, process where yeah. we say visualize yourself yeah. and giving yourself some time don't rush mm. okay where because we have guided you through that meditation session after you a person has been listening to that for 10 15 20 times mm. and knows the steps then they can may need not uh, use that recording mm. but pace that process according to their own mm. uh, uh, comfort you know mm. they might and the ideal thing would be when they visualize that the body became merged in the mind and mind became in, merged into the intelligence mm. and the intelligence merged into that consciousness mm. and in that consciousness there are no boundaries everything is infinite homogeneous limitless mm. that is what each and every one of us are when we say we are a spiritual being it is at that dimension mm. here and now mm. it's not some imagination mm. okay if you could develop that capacity to make the transition mm. you will experience yourself as that conscious being right now yes okay and yogis would do that mm. shri ram krishna goes into samadhi and he would experience himself as that universal consciousness mm. then he will come back into the physical body and function through the limitations yeah. of this but he can shuttle back and forth yeah. we human beings are caught in that human level only yes. bound by the senses and that's why we suffer yes. but even the, but that that high level is still there 
present but only yes, inaccessible yeah this through meditation, meditation we try to make uh, access yeah. that yeah. so so we try to go into that higher level mm-hmm. and rest there mm. don't just enter and come out mm. and feel sort of if i were a realized soul enlightened like buddha or christ or you know any of these realized masters mm. what would i be experiencing myself as such okay that individuality mr x y and z has long time oh. disappeared your physical gender you know male female limitations of the body age that has disappeared mm. all the limitations of the mind your capacity to think understand feel emotion that also has disappeared mm. there's absolutely boundless limitlessness mm. and i am that omniscient being mm. that means imagine a state in which there's no ignorance mm. absolutely all knowing everything here and now this instant that type of wow mm. imagine a state where there's no misery absolutely blissful imagine a state where there's no limitation mm. absolute freedom you're not bound by time by space uh, and 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 everything in its perfection is there mm. i am that being to reinforce ourselves that true spiritual identity we need to linger in that space okay and so i said this is my true nature i want to have that okay because that's the truth about me why should i settle for a limited body and all you know a human experience is good fun okay but that's not mm. when it becomes too hot i should be able to come in here and take a rest type of thing then go out and place a human being willingly Yeah. but not by force and get caught and whacked around and i can't that's the plight of most people i want to be an enlightened player okay not somebody that is playing in ignorance mm. so once you know that has been sort of grounded there nicely then we do the reverse process where we say okay that pure consciousness has decided to embody itself and i am that embodiment in this life so how did it happen that consciousness that pure energy became like the water vapor it became intelligence then it became the mind mm. and then it grossified further body. and concretized as the physical body mm. and this is the situation i find myself body mind some yes. identity but i am always aware of that the source source yeah. so you know in a normal human being, so that that process of resolving mm-hmm. our identity our location i i sense from the physical to the mental to the con- spiritual to the consciousness mm-hmm. and then reemerging mm-hmm. refabricating but this time doing it in your visualization that without all this limitation that means i have a mind that's absolutely calm and perfect and pure okay without any defect defects in there and I have a body that's absolutely pure perfect without any disease tension stress you know like that mm-hmm. so this body mind then becomes the temple of the divine yeah. so to say in which we visualize the divine presence and in that reconstituted pure being that we are because why has it become pure because we 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 merged it into the absolute purity and it's that pure essence again has come as so you feel that i'm a very pure being you know that itself is very, very like uplifting a re, you know? like a restart a restart reset. you know a reset you know yeah. I, i all those limitations that people have been talking about and i was feeling they were not me mm. i dropped them mm. i reconstituted a new body mm. because what do you think that you become yes okay what we think that we become as a man thinketh in the bible mm. you know say that's what he become so rather than dwelling about on our limitations because if you do that you reinforce that we manifest that mm. we now re- reemphasize our spiritual perfect state and let that become the new music that plays inside i'm the ever free ever pure being and let that energy now shine through at the physical level also this is the best way of healing ourselves mm. purifying ourselves that tool to cure ourselves is present always inside each one of us when we do not know this 
knowledge that I've just been talking about in the last 10 minutes. We will go to a counselor, this and that. Hey, can you help me get inside my mind, sort things out there? They will try to help with in their own understanding of things, cognitive baby, behavior therapy and all those things. But look here, this is a spiritual way of doing it. And it's our own tool. We're not going to anyone else. It's your own thing that's available to you. What we are sharing is the knowledge and the method by which one can access that energy and power within. So, but the logic of it is, is this. So we connect ourselves to this spiritual being, then to refabricate this whole thing. And then in the core of your heart, heart doesn't mean the physical heart, it means the center of my being. I visualize a beautiful lotus. If I'm Maori, I'll visualize a koru. Mm-hmm. Both are symbols of something that is potentially present that will unfold and manifest in a beautiful way, like a, a lotus will open up and, yeah. and beautiful flower. It becomes a koru. Imagine that to be a beautiful koru made out of light. Coiled inside is all the potentiality of that beautiful fern that mm. will express itself. Mm. So different traditions will have their own symbology. We mm. can use that. Yeah. Mm. But the concept is there has to be an unfoldment. Yes. Unfoldment yeah. means yeah. transitioning from the physical to the mental to the spiritual dimension. Mm. The fully opened lotus is in the spiritual dimension. Mm. The fully unfurled koru fern leaf mm. is in the spiritual dimension. Mm. And to, to unfold means I have to make this shift of my eye sense away from the body, away from the mind into that spiritual being. And so that's where because the mind needs something to hold on to. The nature of the mind is that it requires a name in a form, some idea. Otherwise, it lands in a blank abstraction. Okay, ultimately, we can go beyond all thoughts and ideas, but in the intermediate process, it's good to give it some tangible support. Yeah. And that's why in, his, in different spiritual traditions, the spiritual teachers will say he is a spiritual deity or being or incarnation some 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 somebody somebody who's a manifestation Mm. of that infinite consciousness Mm. where the powers of that being are Mm. represented in that particular personality to whom we pray Mm. okay could be christ Mm. could be buddha could be rama krishna rama krishna could be shiva durga it doesn't matter Mm. whichever tradition you have those who don't believe in a form of god they might meditate on that pure light but that Mm. light represents that it's a representation of that consciousness. Mm. That's the important idea. Yes. Now, the important thing is that meditation means keeping the mind one pointed on that one name and form. Mm. Normal mind jumps from one thought to another. Yes. Hopping mm. from this to this. We want to give uh, uh, develop the capacity that it can reside only on one thought. Yeah. Okay, and that's why to facilitate the process, our Vedic teachers said that's where the mantra comes. Yeah, that's the word that that represents that divine form. And by repeating the mantra, Om Mm. is the most universal sound. We have talked about it. Mm -hmm. Those who are not religious or belong to different religious traditions or don't have access to a mantra might want to use Om. It's not a Hindu thing. Mm. If all the sounds that were produced by a human being in any language are encapsulated and compressed into one one package, the sum total of that will sound like Om. Yeah. And at one end when you speak the mouth is open ah and the other end when it's closed it's goes mm, and the impulse rolls from the open to the close, it transitions through the oo. So ah o mm, when you put it all together, Om yeah represents the sum total of all the sounds that can be, and therefore it's the best symbol of the totality. All right. The different sounds are like the different colors. So when a beam of white light passes through a prism, we understand in physics, mm. it spreads out into a whole spectrum, spectrum. of thousands of colors. Mm. So the different words that we are speaking are like all this infinite number of colors. Okay. Mm. But if they're all cons- resolved back, so when you get the Newton's color wheel and you spin it, yeah. it becomes white. It yeah. appears white. white yeah. Okay. So like if all the sounds are resolved to the source, they will all merge and the sound that will be produced due to the emergence of all the sound is the sound O. Yes. 
So if you visualize that in your mind this incessant chatter is going on, mm. which are different thoughts, ideas yes. are there, mm. and you say, I don't like them, mm. they're disturbing, you know, but I can't get rid of them. What is the one? So, yeah. so I need to resolve it to its cause. Yes. Okay. Okay. Resol- solving means resolving. Yeah. Okay. That's the method here. You, you don't fight it, but you just take it back to its course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, what when you repeat the Om, then all this little chatter that is going on, yeah. they merge back into their mm. oneness. All the colors merge into that white light. All the sounds merge into that Om. And that is why all mantras start with Om. Mm. Even if one is not a religious person or doesn't belong to any particular faith, and they have all this anxiety and thoughts and this and that if they just deeply resonate their mind with that sound ohm and people can say i'll just try it out and let me see if it helps not be free to do that spiritual life is not just believing things it's about really exp- experiencing experimenting with this yeah. so and you'll find that it helps hmm. but then there are more advanced techniques and mantras that are more specifically designed you know okay for a little headache you can get little panadol But for particular injuries, you'll require some different types of okay. medicines, you know, meant for muscles or this yeah. or that, isn't it? So there are different types of mantras and tools that have, are available in spiritual traditions for specifically addressing, you know, people of different temperaments. Yes. They are not all similarly constituted. Yes. So according to the constitution of the mind of the person, different mantras are there. But the idea is that the mantra represents an energy. Mantra Shakti. You are not repeating the word, but you are trying to resonate with the energy of the mantra in that repetition. Right. Okay. And that energy has its original source to the pure consciousness. So when we focus onto that mantra with great concentration, reverence and knowing that it is connecting me to my deepest being, There's no God there. I am the God at the spiritual level. Mm. Okay, but I have lift, shifted from that idea of my universality, omniscience and omnipresence, mm. my divinity, and I have become limited as a human being. I want to retrace my mm. path back. Yeah. So this idea of solving a problem by resolving to its cause is an interesting idea and concept. Mm. Even great thinkers like Einstein says, you know, and says the solution to a problem doesn't exist at the level of the problem it exists at a higher level from plane okay yeah. so when we are saying this is a physical problem yeah. then we take the help of knowledge virus came okay who solved it scientists who had the knowledge yeah. who decided to devise some vaccine and things and you had a solution for that when there are problems in the mind level then using the same logic we have to access its cause okay yeah. that's why all this cbt and all those things which is sort of looking at the behavior physical behavior and mental behavior the solution cannot be there because solution has its solution resides in a yeah. higher level yes okay logic of it mm. you know yeah. so vedanta mm. helps us or meditation helps us develop that Mm. that faculty is called buddhi mm. in sanskrit okay and in the english equivalent i would say is intelligence but not the normal artificial intelligence or spiritual. the human intelligence spiritual intelligence mm. and when we focus on a particular divine form and try to resonate with the energy of that form this hidden capacity potential in every person every human being when it's exercised it begins to manifest we talked in the early stages how exercises are important like going to the gymnasium yeah. and you do this something repeatedly and this muscles body responds by manifesting muscles mm. you do those exercises in the school classroom education then those intellectual muscles are developed spiritual disciplines of japa and meditation are specifically designed exercises to develop the spiritual intelligence yeah. the buddhi that is what is missing in most people mm. and therefore they cannot understand the the workings of their own mind mm. 
and they do not control that also and the will power is low and the will this will power is weak weak yeah okay so the development of that will power which is ichha shakti mm. yeah ichha shakti is the i will do something mm. if that will power is very strong then one persists and perseveres in when difficulties come challenges come they don't abandon then take another path mm. they just keep cut going. through the mountain so to say yes okay so those are the people who are very successful you know they they reach the goal others so much wasted effort and go around in circles and yeah. you know get tired and nothing yeah. much comes out of it so this development of this will power is the real purpose of education i would like to take one episode in future and talk about what is this but sufficient to say whether we know it or not if a child starts meditating concentrating and the parent and the teacher understands that i'm trying to empower the child with a tool by exercising through this process of meditation and awaken what is called the buddhi or spiritual intelligence with which the child or in later in life will be able to understand the workings of the what's happening in the mind space thoughts ideas emotions feelings and everything in a as an observer and discriminate what is desirable and des- not desirable good and bad and make the right choices hmm. if that training is, done, is yeah. given to the child by the parents mm. and teachers i think we have given them the best education mm. but if we just fill their mind with so much information and then check that out in the examination whether they can reproduce them mm. this is the most primitive form of understanding of education so to say mm. okay mm. never mind <laughs> what has happened happened we can't go but, through primary school but we there's nothing stopping us from reeducating ourselves yes so meditation is really developing those tools which we should have developed in the early days mm. okay but didn't come that way it's never too late so, to no. develop that even now yeah. and one should dedicate a little bit of that time mm. daily morning and evening otherwise we'll be at the mercy of this mind mm. mercy of this world get thrashed around cry no one is going to help us even if you go out who can help you eventually you will see yeah. some counselor some psychiatrist yeah. and they might help you in some ways yeah. but the help that you need is available within you yes the method is very simple yes we have to keep ourselves and 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 i think that's the beauty in the simplicity of this spiritual mm. approach to this thing so in this meditation uh, sunil we have talked about this development of this will power Yeah. the spiritual intelligence mm-hmm. i would like to take one session and go deep into that into uh, power into this i think because then people will understand what why am i meditating am i waiting for some spiritual experience to happen mm. will i have some spiritual vision or something like that you know is what's the outcome i'm looking for yes. no no we are just being very very practical i've got a physical dimension i've got a mental dimension this is a spiritual dimension that i have not nurtured properly okay yes. and i'm going to strengthen that through this exercise of meditation then i'm getting i will have the bridge that will then connect the mind to the consciousness right now there's a gap so little bit uh, if current is trickling down we don't have a, a super conductor through which that energy flows through but in saints and sages you know who Good nurtured that and yeah. perfected that um, that uh, art of meditation mm. and connected themselves to the source infinite source yeah. to them through them not yeah. to them through them that power of blasts through yeah. and you see what is the impact in this world mm. you know a carpenter's son born 20 centuries ago mm. has such an influence even this age he was also a human being but yes. it was more than that he became a conduit through which the divine power flow mm. that ocean is present behind you me and every one of us mm. and the best thing we can do is to learn how to connect with that mm. and meditation is called the royal path you know yes. the, so i hope yeah. i've given you a little bit of understanding yes. about uh, why we have a, you know moved from that basic level meditation to this yes and what's the philosophy or the psychology behind it yeah. and what we are trying to do in there yes as the additional part of it so we hope okay. our rhythm listeners will understand this and now don't think this is a religious thing no. it is a, a practice of self development mm. or learning how to 
avail and access the power from the grid. Yeah. We are not a small battery from the shop mm. that will get drained out no. after some time. We to want to connect to the infinite source. Infinite source. And that source is within us. Yes. We just need to have the tool and that tool is the buddhi. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Samaji. That, that's been quite useful. As in, but as you say, it's uh, we've done the philosophy or the understanding of why we've why we have this advanced meditation technique, but it's the experience, right? So we all have to get practice. down and practice. Yes. If we don't practice, then we'll never be able to unlock the yeah. real potential yeah. of any of this. It will be just theory. Yeah. Some <laughs> self-discipline. Yes. Uh, ideally, at least 15 minutes morning and evening without yeah. an excuse. If you miss one, next day you should double it up and try to catch up and say, yeah. but little bit of strictness with ourselves. Yes. We, we need to learn how to take care of ourselves. Yes. No one can help us if we can't help ourselves. Yes. We are the most important purple person to ourselves yes. but if we think everyone else is important from morning to evening you're looking for looking after a husband or wife or yes. children or boss or employees or customers this yeah. and there no. that's all good you do that yeah. but you, you need to take care of yourself yes indeed all right Swamiji thank you most welcome we'll, Sunil we'll carry we'll on catch up again soon okay bye thank you for listening being in balance rhythm. For more information, please visit www.vedanta.nz.